All right, guys, going to be breaking down the Thursday night showdown slate between the Detroit Lions and the Kansas City Chiefs. Let's go on and get into it. So I do like to do just a quick uh, betting preview of kind of just the expectations for the game, how Vegas is going to think this game is going to go. So we can see about a 52.5 for the game total, okay? And the Chiefs are going to be favored by four and a half points. So really right away, that's going to tell us what, that we are not going to be playing either of the defenses, okay? That is, to me, the tall tale sign that we do not need to be playing those defenses. And guys, if we were to go ahead and look at something like prize picks, they both are saying that the defenses are kind of going to struggle only going to score about 5.5 and 3.5 points so that, that that tells us that we don't want to be on the defenses and then for what it's worth both the kickers are actually kind of looking like okay options 8.5 points for harrison buckner and then also riley patterson has 7.5 for a fantasy score there as well so maybe you could be looking at one of them but obviously the biggest news takeaway that we're going to be focusing in on is going to be travis kelsey if he is going to be active or not if he sits and i, I think that's going to be everyone's expectation is that he's going to sit then that actually might mean that someone like harrison and Buckner might be in for a few more kicks, you know, a couple of drives might stall a little bit more. I think that the offense for the Kansas City Chiefs is still going to be productive, but maybe they're just not able to connect uh, in the red zone as much. Maybe that does lead to a couple more uh, field goal attempts for Harrison Buckner. I don't mind that logic, although it's probably not something we need to be going crazy with. When we're looking at the Kansas City Chiefs, so with that news that Kelsey is going to be out, who are we going to be looking at? I do like Kadarius Tony a lot. But really, the only way I can see myself playing him is if that's going to be in the captain spot. And that might sound weird to some people, but like he is someone that could break the slate. He is someone that could end up having the most fantasy points. And if that happens, I think we could gain a bigger edge on him in the captain spot than we would just by having him in our builds just kind of randomly as a flex option. That is not that likely to happen. I would say the most likely option is going to be that his snaps are going to be limited. Thus, the production is going to be a little bit limited there as well. Uh, this is kind of like the preseason thing. I, I would do this a lot. It's like if we're kind of correct about him being a good player, he's going to be low owned, could go off in the captain spot for you. And maybe that's the biggest edge that you need. Not something we want to go crazy with, but talent wise, it wouldn't be shocking to see him have a big game. He was a full participant in Wednesday's practice there as well. Uh, but really, I think a lot of people are just going to be going to the value here with Sky Moore. He's going to be chalky. We know that. But Sky Moore is going to be an every down player here for the Kansas City Chiefs. I, I put that in quotations because he might be an every down player, but they have also mentioned that uh, other players like Rice, the rookie receiver, and also like Ross, the preseason darling, a, a player that got a bunch of hype, they're going to have packages. They're going to be more gadget players. So to me, that kind of says, okay, you got Tony, you got Rice, you got uh, Ross. Are they going to be designing specific plays for them? Whereas like Sky Moore is just on the field a bunch because they trust him. And sure, yes, it, volume is key. Playing snaps is key. The price point's great. Obviously, I think we're going to be playing him, but I don't think he's like a lock and load. I don't think we need to be going out of our way to play him in the flex. And for what it's worth, like MVS, he's another kind of one of those Kadarius Tony type plays where I'm not saying like if we're playing him, we're only playing in the captain spot, but I kind of feel like he is someone that could easily break the slate. Like if he has a game like this, it wouldn't be shocking. His best games actually as a pro, I think really were at the tail in the season last year where he had some impressive catches. We know who he is as a player, though. He is just a big play guy. And so that's where... If we're playing him, we're playing him so he hits a big play. We're playing him in that captain spot because we think he's going to hit that big play. And because he's at a cheap price point, we could easily make that work. Uh, not a sexy play by any means. And then for what it's worth, like looking at these other options, Noah Gray is kind of priced up. Uh, Travis Kelsey's banged up. He wouldn't be a terrible play. Uh, to me, it'd be more of a shoulder shrug play. Like if you end up on him uh, to close out your build, like you have let's say 2.4 left over, 2.8 left over, and you end up on him, I'd be fine with him as a play in that regard. Then looking at, guys, I like. let's just make this clear. I really wouldn't be shocked if any one of these players gets some playing time. Richie James Jr., he's a player that some people are actually pretty excited about. Uh, Ross, Ross honestly looked the part. <laughs> like, he, he's someone that, to me, watching the preseason, I was like, dang, he needs to get some playing time in the NFL. He needs to get some snaps for the Kansas City Chiefs. It wouldn't be shocking to see him really be productive for them. They could have just be, like, saving him. Like, why would they be hyped? him up now i think we would have had some sort of report saying that he has been getting some work with the number ones we are not getting that but maybe at the same time maybe you know that just hasn't been made available to the public uh justin watson is a guy that can be involved in the in the offense he was kind of a uh solid player for them last year. okay like it just wouldn't be shocking to see him have a decent game and for him to be the min price that's that's highly intriguing to me okay because you can make a lot of things work he should be able to pay off his price tag there like if he can play 
35 percent of the snaps or so and especially obviously if kelsey's out you got to find ways to get other people involved uh, it's gonna be tough for him not to at least get one catch to be able to get like two points to pay off this min price tag not a play that i like but also i i feel like he has their trust so i wouldn't be shocking to see him play but i was i was more loving this play if tony was gonna be out with tony active it's it's only a salary relief type play then for what's worth looking at like patrick mahomes yeah i think we can still play him guys uh the last time we saw like patrick mahomes or kelsey said patrick mahomes was still able to be productive now that was in like 2021 that team still went off they still scored like 30 points so like i don't think we're too worried about patrick mahomes i do think we are going to be able to fit him into our builds uh it's just do you want to play him in your captain spot he's probably the safest play to be honest in the captain spot uh, if you're maybe building a cash build you just work your lineup construction around that because he's the most likely to have the most points then for what's worth looking at the other players here like Isaiah Pacheco highest price running back for the Chiefs wouldn't be shocking to see him be the highest scoring Chiefs player but given his price tag and given the enduring situation to Travis Kelsey I actually think I like Jarek McKinnon a little bit more I think he could be a little bit more in the uh, a little bit more involved in the passing game with Travis Kelsey being out uh, so that's definitely a Travis Kelsey dependent play like if Kelsey is active I probably am not gonna be playing McKinnon as much and then honestly like we could see CEH be a little bit more involved than we thought like it just wouldn't be too crazy uh especially with how old jerick mckinnon is kind of a veteran running back they might choose to save him keep his legs fresh for that playoff run kind of like we saw last year so he's not dead in the water just yet not somewhere going out of our way to play let's go ahead and take a peek at the detroit lions so looking at the lions a lot of people are going to be trying to go out of their way to play asb and i'm not saying that's gonna be wrong you look at some of his props like on prize picks they have his fantasy score set at 17 okay my projections have him a little bit lower at about uh 14.5 but like that is still a lot of production right like that is still something we shouldn't be ignoring and obviously this game is gonna be a higher scoring game he is someone that you expect to be involved uh he was heavily targeted last year as well you know basically in games that he was active guys he averaged like over 9.5 targets per game okay so if that continues to be there and his receptions over and under set seven he's also someone i think we need to be trying to maybe fit into our build from there gibbs is apparently gonna have not gonna have a full workload i have no idea what that means i have no idea why they would tell us that to me, that kind of just screams he's going to have a full workload. He's going to be heavily involved because, like, why would they tell us that? It seems like a deception thing. At the same time, sure, that doesn't give us a warm and fuzzy. At the same time, I don't like this price tag. And at the same time, we can get David Montgomery for 6.6. .6. Like, David Montgomery is going to be involved. Once again, if we just use this, yes, we see that Gibbs is projected to get 13.5 for a fantasy score, but David Montgomery is projected to get 11.5. Like, considering the price discount, like, that is not that huge. And I would almost say, honestly, David Montgomery probably more likely to get a uh, touchdown. And for what it's worth, speaking of touchdowns, Jared Goff is projected on prize picks and other, you know, underdog Vegas. He's projected to get 1.5 touchdowns. And that's actually favored by about 54, 53%. So he's probably going to get two passing touchdowns. Okay. Not a terrible line there. Now, I don't think this offense is going to be as good as they were last year. They had a lot of kind of fluke touchdowns because of, you know, pass interference and whatnot. Had a ton of plays on the wide drone line. I think it's easy to say and easy to see that they're not going to be as high scoring of that being said once again this is a high scoring game it'd be tough to see him not being able to get that much points right still at a cheap price tag and then looking at marvin jones jr he's kind of the expected receiver number two there uh the question is do we need to play him because we could look at some of the other value that's out there like josh reynolds extremely cheap for a guy that should be involved there were times last year he had a great run last year uh, you know a little month period where he was the receiver number two they were treating him as such, and he was productive. I think we need to be taking some stabs at him. He kind of almost falls under the a little bit of the MVS Tony type thing where maybe he's better off as a captain to play because he has the ability to go off. Also, not too much worth of a flex play to me. Like the price discount that we get on him as a play would make more sense in the captain spot than it would as a flex because he if he goes off, he's he's going to really go off is what, I, what I'm saying there. And then for his price tag, like Raymond does seem to be very cheap. Like it's really, do you want to go Watson or Raymond kind of for the value? And especially if you are fitting these studs in there, like I'm telling you guys to do, we're going to have to fit some sort of value in there. And honestly, maybe we go both of them and that could work. Like I said, probably going to go Patrick Mahomes in the captain spot. You could still go Jared Goff in the captain spot if you want to, but look at this guy's like, we have a lot of salary left over. Like we can really make a lot of builds that we want work. I do think Marvin Jones has a good chance to score a touchdown. That does feel to be a little bit priced up for me. Uh, maybe we don't go with Raymond. Maybe we go with, let's say, David Montgomery there. And then we just go with Watson, try to hope that he gets lucky. It does seem to be like a weird price tag. Once again, with Watson, we're, we're just looking for a catch. Montgomery, we're hoping for a touchdown. ASB 
I mean, really from there, we're just going with the easy play, right? That That's, that's kind of a safe approach here from there. But that's going to be all for this video. If you guys enjoyed the covers, make sure to give a like and subscribe. If you guys want access to the 9 to 5 NFL DFS slide and a optimizer, make sure to click the link in the description below. I have all the projections up there for the slate already. Let's have a good slate. And as always, guys, let's keep cashing.